In this video, I'm going to show you how I made the St. Patrick's Day ring. I made this ring out of a stainless steel nut. My ring size is a size 13. I can get this size ring out of a 7 8 stainless steel nut. For a size 13 ring, I bore the center to a size 12 and a half. I make it a half size smaller so I can sand out the scratches and polish. I use a Harbor Freight boring bit until I just about have all the threads cut out. These are great for rough cutting and I'll switch to the carbide bit for the finish work. I notice a lot of ring makers cutting their stainless steel rings dry. I find it better to use cutting oil and my tool bits last a lot longer. I bought this mini lathe from Harbor Freight. It does a great job, however you can't get too aggressive, otherwise it will shut the machine down. I plan on just making rings with this machine, so for the price you can't go wrong. However, I wish I would have spent the extra $100 to get a 7x14 lathe. This one's a 7x10. The extra 4 inches probably would have made a lot of difference as far as leaving the center stock in place while I'm doing a lot of my work. You can see here I've just about gotten all the threads out and I'll be switching over to the carbide bits here. Because of my ring size and the size of the nut I'm using, I don't have much more material to take off after I get rid of the threads. I could buy my ring blanks online. They range anywhere from $7 to $20. I'm not mass producing them, so I don't mind making them from scratch. The price of this stainless steel nut is a little over $3. It takes me about an hour and a half to get a ring blank ready for the inlay. I like making them from scratch, however if I was going to sell them, I would definitely buy the ring blanks already made. The way I get the measurements for the size ring I need is with a ring mandrel and a set of calipers. I take my calipers and measure the ring mandrel a half size smaller than what I need. I lock the caliper in place and record the number, and this is how I measure my rings. Once I get close to the size I need, I take small amounts of metal away and check in between each run. It's not very critical to be right on in this measurement. Because I'm a half ring size smaller than I need, all I have to do is be pretty close. The rest I'll take off with a Dremel tool. Okay. Once I get the size I want, I head over to the bench grinder. Now I'm going to grind the hex heads off the nut and make it somewhat round. You're probably wondering why I'm doing this on the grinder when I have a lathe. I was doing this part on the lathe, but it was tearing up my tool bits. The hexagon parts of the nut were the only parts touching the tool bit at the time. This causes a slapping reaction to the tool bit that is causing the tool bit to chip. You can hear this reaction in this part of the video. I don't think I'd have this problem with regular steel, but because stainless steel is really hard, I had to come up with a different way of cutting it. It actually goes much quicker on the grind wheel. Make sure you're wearing gloves and, and dip the piece in water as you're grinding because it's going to get very hot. Once I get rid of all the high spots and it's close to round, then I'll take it back to the lathe.
Now I'll take it to the lathe. Now I'm mounting the piece in the ring mandrel, getting ready to cut it to size. I'm going to be using cutting oil here as well. Now you can see here the blank is out of round and it is hitting the tool bit. However, it's a lot less violent and it's a lot easier on the tool bit. I'm going to keep cutting this down until I'm a little under an eighth of an inch thick. Next I'll clean the ring blank with acetone and use a blue sharpie marker as layout ink. I want this ring to be about 5 16 wide. So I'm going to mark it but I'm going to cut it a little bit bigger than that so I have room to machine the rough edge from cutting. Here I'll use the lathe to start my cut. I don't have a parting tool for the lathe, so I'm going to use a hacksaw. I don't have the lathe set on a very high speed. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the hacksaw. I'm letting the blade do the work. Because the stainless steel is so hard, you want to run the lathe at slower speeds when cutting it with the hacksaw. If you run the lathe too fast, it'll create too much heat and dull the hacksaw blade in a matter of seconds. When you're cutting with this method, you need to pay attention to how the blade feels and the sound it makes. You don't want to cut all the way through your ring mandrel. The stainless steel is a lot harder than the ring mandrel and you'll feel the difference when you break through part of the ring. Oh, there you go, I can hear it now. Once it breaks through, you'll want to finish the cut manually. I just went through right there, so I know we're close. Take a little off at a time. If you look while you're cutting, you'll see the grooves from the ring mandrel showing through the cut. There we're in. Once I feel I have the cut all the way through, I'll take a screwdriver to try and pry the two pieces apart. Now I'll take a screwdriver and separate the rest of the way. There we go. That's so we don't cut through the mandrel. Now I have my ring blanks. One the width that I originally wanted, and the leftover I can make a smaller band out of. Now I'll mount the ring back in the chuck and grind the inside out with a Dremel tool until I reach a size 13 ring. First I'll use a 60 grit drum sander on a Dremel tool, then I'll drop it down to a 120. I'll keep checking my size with my mandrel and my calipers to make sure I don't make the ring too big. You can take the ring down to the size you want with the Dremel tool. You don't have to leave any extra for polishing because this takes off very little metal. This is where you have to be very patient with grinding the ring. If you take too much off, you won't be able to get it back, 
and then the ring will be too loose and you'll have to start all over. You also don't want it to be too small because you won't be able to put it in a ring structure because the stainless steel is too hard. If it's too small, you'll have to regrind and start the polishing process all over again, and the polishing process takes quite a bit of time. Once I get it to the size I want, I'm going to cut a 45 degree bevel on the inside edge of the ring. This is for comfort in what they call a comfort ring. If you left the edge square here, because the ring is so thick, it would be very uncomfortable to wear. You can see the bevel on the edge, and that will get smoothed in when we polish the ring. There is one thing I forgot to do before I put the bevel on. I forgot to clean the face edge up. After cutting it with the hacksaw, there's going to be a rough edge on the face, and I have to clean this up. Now re-bevel the edge and start polishing. Everything I've done on the lathe up to this point, I've done with the lathe on low speed. Now I'm going to shift the lathe into high speed for the polishing process. I start out with a 120 grit emery cloth, then move on to a 220 grit sandpaper. I use the 120 grit emery cloth to round over the bevel I put on the ring to make it more comfortable. Then I go from 400 grit to 600 grit. When you get to the 600 grit, that's when the ring will start to shine. Then I go from 600 to 800 grit. Then I finish it off with 1500 grit. This is where I'll double check the size. If I miss the size, then I have to grind it and repolish everything. So before I flip it over to do the other side, I make sure it's the size I want. Now I'll flip the ring over, stick it back in the chuck, and start all over again doing the same thing to this side as I did the other side. When I put it back in the chuck, I'm trying to chew it up the best I can, as close as I can, before I start machining the face and getting it to the size I want. The only thing I'm doing to this side that I didn't do to the other side is getting the ring to the width that I want. Now that both sides are done, all that's left is to polish it, which I'll do later. Now I'm going to put the ring back on the ring mandrel. I'm going to wrap it with Teflon tape so it doesn't scratch the inside of the ring we just polished. Once I get the ring on the mandrel, I use the live center to expand the mandrel and hold the ring in place. Now I'm setting up the cutters and getting ready to cut the groove for the inlay.
Here I'm just going to chew up the surface one last time and then I'll start cutting the groove. Now I'm going to start cutting the groove for the inlay. I'm using this bit to get most of the uh, groove cut. Then I'm going to switch to a left side and a right side bit to square off the sides. Here I'm just making sure I don't go all the way through the ring with my groove. This ring is about 2.5 millimeters thick. I'm going to turn it down to where there's about 3 quarters of a millimeter left on the ring. Now that I have the depth that I want, I'm going to switch the tool bit to square off the right and left sides. And clean off the inside. square out the other end. Left hand bit. This ring is about 3 eighths of an inch wide, which is about 9.52 millimeters. Here I'm looking for a quarter inch groove or a 6.35 millimeter groove. Now that I have the width that I want, I'm ready to start the inlay. One thing I didn't show before I start the inlay is I clean the surface of the ring with either lacquer thinner or acetone. Everything must be really clean in order for the glue to stick.